Right. In this methodology, we're going to tie together the stuff we've been learning about vector value functions um, to describe the movement of an object in space. Um, and so here are the uh, vector value function r of t, uh, first component two thirds times the quantity one plus t raised to the three halves. Uh, second component two thirds times the quantity one minus t raised to the three halves. Third component square root of two times t. And that, that t is not in the square root there. So regular t times the square root of two. Um, this vector value function describes the position of a particle. You can think of the parameter t as time. Um, and then the coordinates of the terminal point of the vector as the position of the object as it moves through space and time. Um, so if that is the position function, then the derivative with respect to t or respect to time would be the velocity function. Um, and that's what we do in step one is find the velocity vector. Uh, and just like before, we'll take derivatives of each of the components. Um, so the three halves multiplies with the two thirds and we just get the one plus T. A uh, new exponent is one less, so it's one half. Same on the second component, two thirds times three halves is one. Um, one minus T, new exponent is one half, but then the chain rule gives us a negative from the negative T in there. And then the last one, again, that's a like square root of two times T. Uh, so you just get the square root of two when you take the derivative. Uh, now, before we go on to acceleration, let's find the speed vector, not speed vector, <laughs> the speed function, um, which is the magnitude of the velocity vector. Um, we're using S here for speed, uh, but you'll see different letters being used. So magnitude of V. And so that's the square root of the sum of the squares of these components. So I'm going to write them as square roots, just so we can kind of see it better. So square root of 1 plus t squared, and then negative square root of 1 minus t squared, and then square root of 2 squared. All right. Um, it looks like I used a regular v, like a non-vector v in the uh, notes. So for this, again, different notation depending on where you look. Um, I'm gonna stick with s. All right. So the in here, the square root and square cancel, and we just get one plus t. And then the square gets rid of that negative, and the square root and the square cancel, and you get one minus t, and then the square and the square root cancel and you just get a two. Uh, the t's cancel, add to zero, and then one plus one plus two is four, and square root of four is two. Look at that. So we get the speed is a constant two. Um, and that might seem counterintuitive for a minute because the velocity was not constant, um, but that's because velocity uh, incorporates the magnitude, right, which is the speed, but also the direction. And so a situation where the speed's not changing, but maybe we are changing direction. All right, um, next we're gonna find the acceleration vector. So we kind of go back to the vector in step one and take a second derivative. Uh, and we call this A acceleration. And uh, we've got a one half from the exponent and then one plus t to the negative one half. Uh, and then a one half, uh, the negatives will cancel on this one because you get another negative from the one minus t chain rule effect. And then uh, the derivative of a constant zero, so we get zero for the third component. So that's our acceleration vector as a function of the parameter t. We often want to break that up into its tangential and normal components. Tangential component will be due to changes in the speed, and the normal component will be due to changes in the direction. Um, and we have some formulas here. So for the tangential component, again, these are components of the vector, so they themselves are scalars. So we're not going to put the little vector arrow on top. We want to use A for both of them. 
So we'll give a little subscript T for tangential, a little subscript N for normal, um, and that's the notation. And what we do is we do the dot product of V, which was the vector in step one, with A, which is the vector in step three. So you want to kind of look at what we have here. We're going to be multiplying those and multiplying those and multiplying those. And now those expressions, one plus T and one plus T are the same. Um, and then one minus T, one minus T. So in the first two components, you have the same expression, but you have different exponents. So when you multiply those, you would add the exponents. The exponents are opposites, right? One half minus one half uh, will in fact be zero. Um, and so you'll get a one plus t to the zero, uh, which is just one. Uh, but there's a one half there, and so you have the one half left over. Right? So it's one plus t, and you basically have one half minus one half. Uh, in the second one, you have a negative one half, and then one minus t. And then I get one half minus one half for adding the exponents. Uh, and then in the third component, it's just square root of two times zero. Third component. There's no components here. What am I doing? This is not a vector. Apologies. So after we multiply, we add these results. So let's put some plus sign there. There we go. So multiply the components and then add those results because it's not a vector, goodness. Um, and so this is gonna be one half minus one half plus zero, and it's gonna be zero. Not surprising, right? We already mentioned that the speed was a constant, and then we said that the tangential component of the acceleration was due to changes in speed. Well, if the speed's a constant of two, then it's not changing very much, is it? So no surprise there. Um, good to see that validating our previous work. Um, so that means that all the acceleration is in the normal component. Um, but in general, right, the acceleration is a, a vector. And you can think of it having these two components, you know, the tangential component and the normal component, right? And these add up uh, according to normal kind of vector addition. Uh, A equals AT. Um, in the direction of the uh, tangent vector, right? So you technically need the unit tangent vector there. And then a n, and then the unit normal vector there. Um, and so what we're going to do is Oh, I guess that's not really what we want to think of them as the, uh, in terms of the um, Pythagorean theorem. And that is the, right, if you had a, a vector, or sorry, a triangle with sides A, B, and C, right, you'd have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And we kind of have that here, so it'd be AT squared plus AN squared equals the magnitude of A squared, right? So you have to use the magnitude for the vector A because it's the length of that side. So solving for A n, that's where that formula comes from, right? It's just uh, subtract uh, tangential component squared and then take the square root. All right, well, this calculation is pretty easy in this case um, because um, because the tangential component is zero. And since that's zero, um, this is just the square root of the magnitude of A squared, which is just the magnitude of A, uh, which makes sense. It's all in the normal component. But we haven't actually calculated the magnitude of A yet. So we still need to do that. Uh, we have A from step three. Um, and we just want to do the magnitude of that vector, so the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. Uh, and I don't know if the square root notation is really that helpful here, so let's try to go without it. Uh, 
All right, so when you square those first two terms, you get one fourth from the one half squared. Um, and then the negative one half and the square multiply and you just get a negative one. Um, and so we are out of room. Let's write it here. We have one fourth, one plus T to the negative one plus one fourth, one minus T to the negative one. And that is our thing that can be simplified um, by some algebra trickery. Um, and you can simplify this to one over square root of two times one minus t squared. So that is the normal component of acceleration. It's also the magnitude of the acceleration vector. All right. Uh, we got a little more to do here, but we need to clear the page to move on. So we got uh, step six. We're going to find the unit tangent vector. And we found the uh, velocity vector in step one. But let's rewrite that here. Uh, and then we found the magnitude of the velocity vector in step two. Remember, that was the speed. So you should already have these two things, the results from steps one and two. And all we're going to do is uh, combine them. We're going to divide. Um, and this will give us our unit tangent vector. Um, and since the magnitude of B is just two, we can just divide everything in that vector by two or just put a one half in front of each thing. Yes. And then the square root of two over two, which is one over root two. So not too bad to get the unit tangent vector. You already have that stuff. Um, but for the unit normal vector, we need to uh, find the derivative of the unit tangent vector and then its magnitude and then divide. So let's do that next. So the derivative of the unit tangent vector, we would take the derivative of each component. And this will look a lot like the acceleration vector, um, but it could be different uh, depending on the situation. So we just have that one half come out and give us a one fourth. And then the new exponent is negative one half. Uh, and then with the second one, the negatives are going to cancel, and you get a one fourth, one minus t to the negative one half, and again a zero there. Now we find the magnitude of the derivative of the unit tangent vector. So when we square it, we're going to get 1 over 16. And then the exponents will multiply. Negative 1 half and 2 is negative 1. And you don't need to worry about the 0 there. So when that simplifies, You get uh, 1 plus t to the negative 1. Uh, and so that's just 1 over 1 plus t. And 
and one over one minus T. And you can, so bad. You can uh, get a common denominator with these. I didn't really show it earlier. Maybe we should show it. So the, the trick for this is just to multiply each one by the other one's denominator, right? So this would get multiplied by one plus T on the top and bottom, and this would get multiplied by one minus T on the top and bottom. And then they both have that common denominator of one plus T times one minus T, which is a difference of squares, one minus T squared. Um, and then you can combine the numerators, um, one minus t plus one plus t, and the t's add to zero. Um, and uh, the ones add to two, and two over 16 gives you eight. At that point, you don't need the square root in the top anymore. And that's how we would do that earlier in step five as well. All right, now putting it all together um, to get the unit normal vector, which is a capital N vector, right? That's the magnitude, or sorry, the derivative of the unit tangent vector T divided by its magnitude. Um, and, you know, we're dividing by this one over. And so you're really just multiplying by that, right? So there's, T prime by, but dividing by one over would be like multiplying by this. And so you multiply each of the components by that. Uh, and then what happens? You have square root of eight over four, um, which is uh, square root of eight over square root of 16, which is the square root of one half, right? Um, and so you get one over root two. And then the one plus t, yeah, I guess we'll just write it out. This is This is too much to just say, right? So that one over four, I'm gonna make that a one over square root of 16. And then the square root of eight goes above it. That's gonna turn into the one over root two. Um, I've got a square root of one minus T squared in the numerator from the magnitude of T prime. And then the one plus T to the negative one half, that's a square root of one plus T in the denominator. Uh, and then this is very similar here. Square root of eight, square root of 16, square root of one minus t squared, but uh, this is a one minus t. And it's not here. Zero. Uh, but again, the square root of one minus t squared, that's square root of one plus t times square root of one minus t. So if you were to divide by square root of one plus t, then it would cancel and give you the other factor, right? Square root of one minus t. So that's what's gonna happen in the first component. In the second component, the square root of one minus t's will cancel and you'll get a square root of one plus t. So what do we actually get at the end? Uh, we get, one over root two, and then square root of one minus t, one over root two, square root of one plus t. And that's our unit normal vector, all right. So we found all the things, we've broken the acceleration down into the tangential normal components, and we found the, the components or the magnitudes in those directions. And then the vectors here in step six and seven are the directions for that, right? And so again, I think I wrote this before, but you know the vector A has its tangential component and then that's times the tangent vector and then normal component times the normal vector. So instead of decomposing the vector into 
the basis for like I and J and, and the horizontal vertical directions, which aren't necessarily meaningless or aren't necessarily meaningful, we've broken it down in terms of the Brene frame of reference where part of the vector goes in the direction the object is moving and part goes in the normal to that direction. Um, now, if you were to do a dot product um, of this with, say, the tangent vector, so say we took the tangent vector and we did a dot product, right? That means you would do the dot product here as well. Um, when you do the dot product of the normal, the tangent, those are at a right angle, their dot product would be zero. And then when you do the dot product of uh, the tangent vector with itself, uh, vector with itself dot product is one. So this will just give you that tangential component. Similarly, if you do the dot product of the acceleration vector with the normal vector, you'll get the normal component. Um, and so those are the formulas we use in the validation, right? We'll take the acceleration vector that we found in step three, and we'll take the tangent unit tangent vector from step six, and we'll do the dot product, and that should give us the tangential component from step four. And then we can kind of do the same thing in the normal direction. We need the acceleration vector. And then we need the unit tangent vector. We have found all this stuff before. And then we're going to do the dot product of those. So remember, we would just multiply component-wise and then add those results up. And uh, if we multiply those first components, one half and one half is one fourth. And then we've got uh, square root of one plus t over square root of one plus t. So that should just be a one. And then one half and negative one half is minus one fourth. Square root of one minus t over square root of one minus t also goes to one. And then uh, zero times square root of two, zero. And of course that matches up with the tangential component we found in step four. So it's the validation. All right, for the normal component, we need the norm unit normal vector. It's there. And now we're going to do the dot product. of the acceleration vector with that. So we're multiplying those components and then adding those results up. So acceleration vector dotted with unit normal vector. Uh, multiplying the first two, we've got one over two root two, and then it's um, square root of one minus t over square root of one plus t. 
Um, and then with the middle components, got kind of one over two root two, square root of one plus t over square root of one minus t. You see that it's kind of switched. Um, and then a uh, plus zero, right, for the third component. Now that may not look exactly like what we had in for our normal component of acceleration in step five. So you do have to uh, do a little bit of work to algebraically simplify it. Um, and uh, again, I think it's just a matter of getting a common denominator. So here we'd want to multiply by one plus t in the square root. And then here we'd want to multiply by square root of one minus t. And when you do that, uh, square root of one minus t times square root of one minus t is just regular one minus t, right? Because it's squared. So that gets rid of the square root. And then on the bottom, that's one minus t squared. That's the difference of squares. Uh, over here, we'd get a one plus t in the numerator, and then we get the one minus t squared. Um, you can now combine those um, and I don't know, what you'll get is in the denominator, two square root of two, square root of one minus t squared. And in the numerator, you've got one minus t plus one plus t. Um, but that equals two, right? The t's add to zero and one plus one is two. And uh, that two cancels with that two. And that is indeed what we had for our normal component of acceleration. It was one over square root of two times one minus t squared. So we've come full circle and uh, shown that it all checks out, which means we are done with motion vectors in space. In fact, we're done with chapter three. Nice work, everybody. See you in chapter four.